and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. On this edition, we continue the Navy series on Fort McHenry and the Battle of 1812. Talent show auditions are held this week, and MWR needs youth football coaches. These stories and more. But first, as the dog days of summer roll on, beating the heat becomes a priority. Due to this year's closure of the community's Rock Avenue pool, MWR forged some partnerships with local communities to give Fort Meade community members some options. Recently, the Columbia Association opened five pools offering special military DOD rates. The pools are located at Talbot Spring, Faulkner Ridge, Jeffers Hill, McGill's Common, and Running Brook. Other swimming facilities offering special rates in the area include Fairland Aquatic Center in Laurel, the North Arundel Aquatic Center in Glen Burnie, and the Arundel Olympic Swim Center in Annapolis. For discounted rates and more information on the pools, go to Fort Meade's MWR website at www.ftmeadmwr.com. In a related story, as you probably know, the Fort Meade golf course closed earlier this summer to make way for continuing construction. In response, MWR coordinated with several local golf courses to offer military members a special rate. Currently, the Eisenhower Golf Course in Crownsville, the Compass Point Golf Course in Pasadena, and the Timbers at Troy Course in Elk Ridge are all offering special rates for military members. We took our cameras out to the Eisenhower course to check it out. Like the courses at Fort Meade, two of the three courses, Eisenhower and Compass Point, offer rates based on rank. Military members E1 to E5 can expect to save more than half over the regular rate. Beyond that, I talked to a couple of folks about the course itself. So as a golfer, what do you think of this course? It's pretty nice. It's my favorite place around here yeah. to play it. I get a membership every year, the well, Advantage why, Pass. Why do, you, uh, why do you like that here? Um, it's close to home, and it's decent price, fair, fair conditions. It's just where I always come just after work. I can come here real quick and get a few holes in. The employees are very courteous and helpful. The prices are reasonable. And the, the course is challenging, but not too challenging. <laughs> the Eisenhower course is located just a few miles up Route 32 on the way to Annapolis. In fact, all of these courses are within 20 miles of Fort Meade. For more information on tee times and rates, go to www.ftmead.mwr.com. In more golf news, more than 100 courses across 27 states are supporting the Wounded Warrior Project with the world's largest golf outing on Monday, August 13th. Of course, you must have guessed that the Eisenhower Golf Course is one of those. The event raises funds for the Wounded Warrior Project. The Eisenhower Course event is a four-person team scramble format that raises money through sponsorship donations. So far this year, the world's largest golf outing has raised more than $300,000. In other news, Baltimore, Fort McHenry, and the rest of the nation are celebrating the 200th anniversary of the War of 1812 all summer long. The Navy folks at the Defense Media Activity produced a series of reports on the celebration and the history of the War of 1812. In this segment, a focus on the center of all the activity, Fort McHenry. Word of Barney's brave stand at Bladensburg quickly traveled to Baltimore, inspiring the defenders of that key port to hold out against the September British assault. As many as 900 U.S. naval officers and sailors, including over 200 from Barney's flotilla, deployed to defend the city, both aboard ship and on land. Citizens of Baltimore were also instrumental in setting up the city's defenses. Many of the city's defenders took up positions in Fort McHenry, where they traded artillery fire with the British warships, lighting up the night sky with the rocket's red glare. The Americans' determined resistance, inspired by Barney's men, proved to be inspiration for a civilian, attorney Francis Scott Key, who witnessed the bombardment aboard the deck of a British ship, where he had gone to conduct legal business. Moved by the sight of his country's flag at dawn fluttering over the fort, Key jotted down the words to a song that, in 1931, would become America's national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. Here's a quick heads up from Public Works. They're doing some tree removal work this week. On Tuesday, Broadfoot Road will be closed from Leonard Wood to York Avenue for the entire day. If possible, the second entrance to Gaffney Parking on Broadfoot will remain open. And on Wednesday the 8th, Buck Road will be closed from Roberts Avenue to Field Band Drive from 5 p.m. on Tuesday to 1 p.m. on Wednesday afternoon. As always, we ask you to take your time when driving through construction areas. One final reminder, Fort Meade Child Youth and School Services Sports needs coaches for the flag football season. The season runs from August 13th through October 12th. Coaches will receive training and certification. For more information, contact the Youth Sports Office at 301-677-1329. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.